Hello everyone, I am the Conage, and I'm back with some more StarCraft II action. This time, we will have a more exciting game from a more exciting league. A step up from the Wood League, we have a Bronze League ZVZ between two fearsome opponents. In the top right, we have Sir Dugald as the Red Zerg, spawning with all his knighthood and his drones mining and rallied appropriately to his minerals. And in the bottom left, we have Occamness, who has decided that he is blue and that he will open with a spawning pool. And by spawning pool, I mean he's opening with a freaking six pool. Which means he wants to get some action in early, because, you know, he doesn't want to sit around and be a bored little zergy poo. You know what I mean? So, as we're looking here on this map, we are going to have a very quick start. Yes, indeed. Now, six pool... It's not really a favorite build of mine. I really think 7 pool is a much better and much more stable build. Because 6 pool, I mean, it just doesn't flow as well, you know. I mean, I guess you supposedly get out your zerglings a little earlier, but, you know. It just, just doesn't have to flow, you know. You want flow, 7 pool is much better. Now the spawning pool finishes, and you can see that Occamness has not... Oh, finally he builds some zerg... He builds two zerglings. Four zerglings. So clearly, Alchemist has not, uh, and they're rallied right here. All right. So you can see that Alchemist is not a professional six pooler. And now that Sir Dugald scouts it, we'll see how he responds. But he's very, you know, his lings aren't out that early. He only has four of them. And look, these ones aren't even rushing out. Oh my. Well, anyways. This is the Zergling Rush of the Ages, a six pool with a delay and with only four lanes. Oh, now six lanes come with a follow-up. And you can see this will be a very intense match of Zergling on drone action, unless can this spawning pool finish in time? Looks like Sir Dugald might have a chance, and this drone keeps trying to run away. Look, we can even see, can you see? He only sees two Zerglings. The other ten or so that are be gonna be coming are gonna be a complete surprise to him. See how many Zerglings are on map. We got ten total, but you can see Sir Dugald's way ahead in the drone count, so maybe if he can get out some Zerglings in time. Maybe a queen. He should be able to defend this pretty well. We'll see what happens. All the Zerglings move in. Four Zerglings versus all these drones. We got a spine crawler coming out already. We're going to attack the drones. Come in and try to instantly attack all of the Zerglings. Oh, they come in. Do some mineral walking to get back in action. Saving themselves. And... The two Zerglings versus Sir Dugald come out and save the day. Followed by these two other Zerglings over here. Wow. Mr. Dougal might be okay, but we got six lanes coming right up in here, and the, spawn, the spine crawler is almost finished. And once the spine crawler finishes, and the queen's almost out, Alchemist will be in a very bad position. And we have the queen coming out and smacking all these lings. He should probably move the queen back to the spine crawler. Oh my! Uh, yes, he should be fine. So yes, this game was done before the most recent patch, so you can see the queen does not throw us little spines and still attacks with its like tentacles or whatever it used to attack with. But we won't worry too much about it since hopefully it won't have a significant impact on this game. But anyways, we have a problem. We got a roach one coming up for Sir Dougal. Let's see how many workers were killed. Four workers were killed by Alchemist during that last engagement. And that actually evens up the drone counts pretty well since Sir Dougal hasn't been building too many drones. He's been worried about defending himself. And now, Al and now Alchemist comes out with five drones to get himself back in this game. So you can see now the Alchemist is actually ahead in the drone count. He also has his queen out and is building a spine crawler as well. Looks like... Sir Dugald's going to counter with some roach action as soon as he gets the appropriate gas, which he seems to have forgot to mine. Which can delay your roach count a little bit. We'll see how that works out. It looks like we got a roach warren coming out for Occamness also, as he puts down two spine crawlers and also begins to start mining gas. And we'll see how these players move out, move forward with this game afterwards. So now we have our overlords positioned in somewhat interesting positions. It'd be a little better if uh, Sir Dugall will get himself like above here. Well, maybe not above here so much because this overlord's hanging around here. Or above here so the, the ground units can't see it as easily. But it's also good to move in back around here or even over here to check when your opponent might expand. And then you can know how to respond properly after that. So you look, drone cows are still relatively close. And then we have Sir Dugall coming out with a macro hatch. And now both 
well, Sir Dugald's about supply blocked. You can see he's got two overlords coming in. And both players are starting their first batch of roaches. <clears throat> see what else is going on. We got our second extractor here. No drones mining. Still on one gas for Occamness. And then these roaches are just kind of sitting around doing a little dance, going back and forth. And then all of Sir Dugald's units are just kind of sitting around. He starts to reposition his spine crawler. Doop, doop, doop. More roaches hanging out. Spawning pool. Not doing much. Looks like both our players are planning to spend most of their gas, which well, these guys are still not being mined from, on roaches. And probably going to have some crazy engagement soon enough. We'll see who ends up with the larger roach count when the ba battle comes. Now Occam is starting to take a second guess. Neither player even thinking about the word expand. Though with this extra macro hatch, Sir Dugald should have a pretty good advantage. Oh, and Sir Dugald comes out with the expansion. Now, if Occamness had positioned his overlord in some sort of reasonable place, or any of his overlords really, he could maybe... Oh wait, nope, never mind. Never mind, I underestimated the power of Occamness as he does see the expansion of Sir Dugald. And we'll see how he responds. Will he attack instantly to take advantage? No, he decides to take up the lair. And wait, looks like he's gonna move out. We'll see what these roaches decide to do, and this one zergling. You see, in the army supply, looks like Occamness is a slightly ar larger army, and since Sir Dugald is slightly supply blocked, it'll remain this way for a little bit. However, the, uh, the supplies are very close, and it is uncertain how this battle would end up. We can see that there's only three roaches out here, and Sir Dugald's army is kind of split up, which could be a problem if... He doesn't actually see this coming. We'll see if he decides to move his units around. No! If this army comes in and engages properly, this could be disastrous for Sir Dugald. Oh, and the battle begins! The roaches crush the zerglings and start crushing the other roaches. There's nothing that Sir Dugald can do with his small roach count. Does he take his other units? No, he just runs all of his units in and he lets the expansion finish. What's he going to do? Is he going to try to defend it? Is he going to or is he just going to let Occamus spit all over his hatchery? Is he going to let him spit all over? The queen comes down. Why? No, the queen stays up. Very... Looks like Occamus is just going to destroy this hatchery and Sir Dougal is just going to let it happen. But behind this, he's producing ten roaches. This could be a rude awakening for Occamus. Or he, he attacks his own queen. No, what's going on? Oh, the battle comes in. Oh, Sir Dougal is a much better concave kind of except for these three roaches back here just running back and forth. And these, looks like Occamus is going to get cleaned up. And what's Occamus side doing? He's side taking expansion on the bottom right all at the same time, teching the spire off his layer tech. And these roaches are sure about to be cleaned up by now. And now we have, looks to be 13, 14, 15, 15 roaches. 16 roaches are going to be coming in. See if Sir Dugall comes in with some more, some responsive aggression. And we'll see if Occamness can hold it off. Now what does Occamness have for units? He has no fighting units currently, just one queen. And if his Spire doesn't finish in time, he could be in trouble. However, if the Spire does finish, it doesn't look like Sir Dugald has planned for any sort of anti-air. He has no Evo Chamber and only a couple Queens. But looks like Occamness has managed to get some Roaches out on the field. He now has eight. And if he puts them in the right position, he could do a little okay, especially if Sir Dugald doesn't gather his army or micro his weaker units back. Oh, we can see what goes on. Looks like we got some epic roach on roach action. And the first mule is already coming out. And without any anti-air here, it could be problematic for our knighted friend here. But you can see Sir Dugald has managed to snag quite a large supply advantage. But since his roaches don't have any speed, they won't really be able to get away from the mule list too effectively. Maybe he can do enough damage while he's in here. Since the Mutalist won't be able to kill the roaches too horribly fast. And you can see he, Sir Dugald sees a spire and immediately tries to focus it down. While well, back home he's still just producing more roaches. We'll see if, if he decides to get any anti-air to fend off a swarm of Mutalisks that will no longer be coming since the spire just fell down. Now Sir Dugald's coming in. He's trying to focus down. He t kills the queen. He's going to kill more of these roaches. Maybe he should aim for drones. I don't really know what he's aiming for. The spine crawler is doing all sorts of damage since it hasn't been focused down. And these roaches are going to get cleaned up pretty handily and these Mutalisks are just going to be able to roam free, but there's only four of them. 
because the spire was destroyed. We'll have to see how Alchemist decides to follow this up. Is he going to rebuild the spire, take another base, spend these minerals? No, he has to fight off these roaches, but with his mutilist, this should be no problem. And back over here, we got Sir Dougal putting down some spore crawlers. So he did put an evil chamber in, res in response. His queens are saving up a little bit of energy, not exactly injecting all the larvae. And... Over here in the bottom right, Alchemist has decided to do nothing with his extra base because he just wanted to put it there to mark his territory, I guess. I don't really know. And then we have these overlords. Looks like a miss rally, or they're just kind of like to travel in pairs because they got some sort of relationship that uh, he didn't discuss with the Overmind previously, but, you know, whatever. That's just kind of how the Zerg military works. They don't need to take care of all this paperwork that uh, the Terrans do. And back over here, we're still sticking on one base. Any no teching of any sort, just kind of building roaches and spore crawlers. Not really sure where uh, Sir Dougal decides to go with this. All at the same time, Alchemist has started to work on his second base, gain himself a nice little economic position, all the while getting his spire back to get him air superiority. Now at this point in time, it'd be nice if, you know, you poke in with his mutilist, take a little look at what's going on, see that, well, what his opponent's doing. You can see finally, Sir Dugald's getting some uh, layer tech, and then Alchemist has decided not to really use his Mutalist for much of anything. He could even try to be hunting overlords, but so far he's decided just to sit back and not do anything at all. In the meantime, looks like Alchemist was actually supply blocked for a little bit, where Sir Dugald's and got plenty of space remaining, but decided not to build any units from it. And now Sir Dugald decides to come in and poke at this overlord, tell him to go away. These Mutalists are just kind of flying around. Doing all sorts of crazy stuff. We'll see if they do anything useful. And we got more drones coming out for uh, Sir Dugald. See if he can use up some of that empty supply he's got there. And these mutilists are once again just going to sit here. Hanging out. Uh, finally, we got some uh, roach speed coming out for Alchemist. See, he'll let's take a look at his next base. Probably using our larva inject here, but he probably won't do that anytime soon. There's no larva inject here either. This queen's also got some energy. And back home, we... S oh, finally, Sir Dugall's injected some larva here. Nothing here too much. Maybe because the queen moved down here. Start this new base. Start a new home for the Zerg Empire. I wonder what really caused these two Zerg factors to start fighting each other anyways. I mean... Really... Do they really have that many differences? I mean, I guess one is red and one is blue. As far as I can tell, I mean... What are they possibly to complain about? They're both Zerg. They're both both buggy bugs. And uh, these mutilists are attacking the rocks. Alright. So, Alchemist has decided that with his mutilists, his best option was to actually attack these rocks after flying around aimlessly for a while. Instead of taking a poke around, he begins to gain some sky information. Mutilists are fast enough to avoid... Most of the stuff that Sir Dugald's got out, especially since he's decided not to go with Infestors and go with Hydras instead. He won't be able to hold these Mutalists in place at any point in time. However, Hydralists will destroy Mutas in a straight-up fight. So as long as Alchemist controls them well, which is something that I'm not necessarily going to assume is going to happen. But, you know, it could happen. You know, he can do a lot of damage with his Mutalists. I don't know how many Mutalists he has on the map so far. He's got seven. Looks like they're all just kind of staying around. It's forming, it's forming some kind of awkward ball of Zerg units. And... Alchemist's base here is starting to look kind of good. Still not really keeping up with the larva injects over here. Looks like Sir Dugall's doing a little better now as all of his uh, hatcheries, one might say, are injected with proper larva. Looks like neither player has decided to go with any sort of upgrades. In fact, Alchemist doesn't even have a evolution tape, an evolution chamber. Oh, and the army is starting to move across the map. After these rocks are destroyed that these mules have been working on for so long, we will see how this bat looks like. How this battle is going to turn out? Looks like Alchemist is going to follow this up with seven more mutalisks. I don't know if he's going to wait for the mules or if he's just going to attack soon. Sir Dugald does not see this coming yet, I don't think, but these hydras... Oh, and the army moves in. Sir Dugald's got the hydra list in front, which is not good. And his roaches in the back, which is pretty much the opposite of what you want to have. 
And these roaches are just going to go to town and probably crush the rest of this forest. Maybe if he can focus down these mutilists will be in great or these hydralists with his mutilists will be in great shape. And yes, looks like Alchemist has definitely got the upper hand in this battle. Of course he's not controlling his army very well because he's got some roaches back here not doing anything. And now this is going to get cleaned up. But we got eight more hydralists and five roaches coming out. <clears throat> oh, he controls music and avoids the spore crawler. Very excellent maneuver from Alchemist. However, he stopped producing anything at home during this attack because he's way too focused and his money is just building up like a madman. And we can see the Hydralists are being sent at this army one by one. The Queen comes down. Is not going to do too much as these roaches are probably, well, actually the reinforcement should be able to clean this up very well since uh, Alchemist was not reinforcing this push and instead was just building up money. And you can see from the units lost tab that um, the Alchemist is ahead by a little bit. And that Sir Dugall probably needs to move these drones at some point. And the Alchemist still chilling on two base, though he has probably the money now to take another base or two. And, you know, cause a lot more damage. But it uh, looks like Sir Dugall's going to beat him to it by expanding again to finally get some use out of these drones. You can see the minerals are getting very low at their main bases. In fact, Sir Dugall's are gone completely. But uh, Alchemist still has some stuff going on. And if Alchemist doesn't do anything about this, this third base sometime soon, but actually he does see it with his Overlord. But he could get behind. But really, look at all his money. He should probably just get, you know, another base himself, or at least another macro hatchery. I mean, building up this much money ain't going to do you too good. It really ain't. Oh, and then we have some roaches coming in, spitting some acid at this hatchery. Oh, these drones are just being targeted, and they're not doing anything but wait. The Zerg army comes in to reinforce and take down these Occamness Occams. Oh, oh my, and the Mutalists come in and try to cause some damage, but they're trying to fight the Hydralists straight up, and that'll be a very bad maneuver. They kind of do a little wheel around, going back to fight the Hydras. No, this could be bad, but the roaches are coming in. Looks like they got a good flank, but once again... Hydras are really good against Mutalists, but when they're focused on the roaches, they'll be taken down for no problem. And all oh, these drones are going to die. No, finally, Sir Dugald reacts and moves them, but not before two more of them get picked off. And these overlords might also have a short lifespan as well. And this hatchery is sure to fall. And what do we have? We've got nine Mutalists coming in from Alchemist. And then we have 11 Hydralists coming out for Sir Dugald. And there's still so much money for Alchemist. Why won't he spend it? I don't know. These Hydras come in without any support, which could be very bad. Except for Alchemist has decided just to let his Mutalists just stand here and fight. Maybe if Sir Dugal can pick off the Mutalists, he'll be in a good spot. Well, at least a better spot than he was before. But we got another swarm of Mutalists heading this way. Looks like we got about nine or so running up the rear. But... What does Sir Dugald have to fend this off? He's got some spore crawlers. Once again, neither side has any upgrades for their units. So these spore crawlers and stationary defense will do very well. And oh, they got a nice little pack of hydras actually positioned very well here. And especially since Alchemist decided to confront them directly with the Mutalisk, which is a very bad idea. And now we got a more ideal position. So the hydralists in the back kind of using the hatchery for some blocking. And these roaches out in front. It should be a good enough combo to take down what Alchemist has got. The DPS on these Hydras is, you know, much better, is actually higher than these Roaches. And if you have something to tank for the Hydras, they can actually effectively deal with Roaches, as you see right here. But now the Roaches are starting to die, and you can see how fast Hydras die when they have no support. And finally, it looks like the scores have been even up a bit as far as the unit sauce tab. And looks like Sir Dugald's in a pretty good position, especially if he can pick off more units in the middle like that. But what do we got coming out for Alchemist? He's coming out with more roaches, gonna head up the right side. And oh, this little force is gonna meet them. I don't even know how this one's going to end. Looks like neither one's controlling them too, 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 paying too much attention. But oh, finally, the other forces of Sir Dugald are going to come in. He really needs to move his Hydra lift back, but I guess he can't really move that fast. It doesn't really matter. But these roaches are definitely going to get cleaned up by that awesome swarm of Sir Dugald. And oh, Sir Dugald grabs his army a little bit, but wait, Alchemist is not done. He keeps sending more forces in, and that one roach just dies for no reason. And we got some big forces coming back out for Sir Dugald, while Alchemist just sits awkwardly with his roaches here, while he takes another expansion to finally get his drones here from doing something. Get them doing something. Let's see, look at the drone counts. Look like Alchemist is ahead 38 to 30 drones so far, 26 minutes into the game. Typically, you want to have a lot more drones than that or any workers if you have me playing any race but uh you know what there's been a lot of action going on so whatever all right we can see that sir dugald has got a lot of gas and he could probably be spending it on something 
though I guess his economy is not doing too great right now since his minerals are very low so he doesn't have that many drones and looks like is Aquinas going to do the runaround gonna take down this third base while Sir Dugall checks out for himself. He still hasn't seen this ninja expansion from Alchemist. And then Alchemist easily gets Sir Dugall to cancel his base over here. And it looks like Sir Dugall's going to come in and make short work of Alchemist's latest base. As there's no, really no way that he can defend this. Oh, it looks like... Is this... Is this what I think it is? Oh my. Looks like it's going to be another base trade. Hmm, I don't know how well this is going to work out. It's like he's decided to ignore this hatchery and just go straight for the main base of Alchemist, but he still doesn't know about this base. While Alchemist comes in and starts destroying everything that Sir Dugald holds dear, all his valuable knighthood possessions are going down the drain. Oh my, these spore crawlers are doing great job though, taking out these mutilists, which will be vital for any sort of base trade snares, as mutilists are going to be the fastest units that Alchemist is going to have. And he's having them fight the spore crawlers one on one each. Who will win? You can see how the spore crawlers just completely destroyed him, and now it's just roaches versus roaches. But finally, more mutilists are coming out. But where are they spawning from? Here? Are these amulets? Yes, the amulets are coming from the bottom right because Sir Dugald still doesn't know about them. And these roaches finally took down the natural expand of Sir Dugald. It doesn't look like Sir Dugald's going to have any mining whatsoever. Which could be problematic. Considering, look at the income tabs, that now Sir Dugald is getting absolutely no minerals, while Alchemist is getting a very small amount. Moving on, we can see that uh, Sir Dugall is going to have to search for his opponent. If we look at our army supplies, looks like Alchemist is a little ahead there too, and especially on worker supplies. Looks like he's reestablishing his important tech in the bottom right. Though he probably could have started doing it a little earlier. Can't complain too much. We still got some drones from Sir Dugall right out around here. It looks like all these roaches are just going to come in and destroy everything. And I don't know what Sir Dugall's going to have to do. He's going to have to find out where his opponent is. At least he's decided to smartly split up his army a little bit to see what's going on. Hopefully he can run into it soon enough. And maybe win the base trade scenario. Especially since Alchemist is not controlling his roaches. He's just letting them sit around. Okay, now he starts focus firing the lair. And it doesn't look like Sir Dugall really needs to sneak out with some of these drones and build extractors or something someplace. Or he's not going to be able to... Oh... Oh, but he split his army up in the perfect location. He's going to spot both of their base, both of the buildings at the same time. Oh, this could be very, very close. I don't know how this is going to end. Hopefully these drones can get out and build some extractors or something to keep Sir Dugout alive while this base raid ensues. And it doesn't look like Alchemist is going to do anything to, like, respond to this. He's not going to take his drones off to fight or anything. He's just going to... Oh, he's just going to call the GG! He's just going to call the GG! He doesn't even realize... Oh, oh, wait, wait. He didn't even actually leave the game. Oh, I've never seen this play before. He's trying to get his opponent to leave the game. <laughs> That's hilarious. But it will not work on Sir Dugall, for he is too wise. He is too smart. And he has built two extractors and doesn't look like Alchemist is going to be able to save his spire. Is he going to be able to do it? Oh my gosh, it's going to be two extractors to one spire. What do we have here? We got 450. It's dropping. It's dropping the last building of Alchemist is going down. Besides, he's going to spend his money on drones. What is he doing? Why didn't he build another building somewhere? And ow! And he dies. And he dies! Sir Dugall takes the victory for the swarm! An epic battle to finish it off! Look how even the unit's lost tab was! Look at everything! The army! Alchemist had a bigger army! If only he had controlled it better, he might have been able to win, but no! He just let himself die! He just let himself die! Whew! Well, that was about as epic of a Bronze League match as I have ever could have expected. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this cast today. And uh, once again, feel free to send me replays anytime you get the chance. And I will see you guys next time.